I'm sitting here at the base of the Dony cinder cone. We're at the very southern end of what's called the San Francisco Volcanic Field Area. We've come to this spot to take a look at some of the ejecta that's hurled out of the top of these cinder cones. So this first piece of material on my left is a very large piece. It's called a volcanic bomb and it's all got to do with its size. What this particular piece here was, was a large globule piece of liquid hurled out of the Dony cinder cone behind me and while it was in the air semi-solidified and it struck the ground as a solid or a semi-solid. So that's a volcanic bomb. The white you see down at the bottom is just some weathering that's occurred over the last few thousand years. So as you move from size down from bomb size, these are actually also referred to as bomb sizes, something like this. But by the time you start getting down to the size of material ejected this size, we're into what's referred to as cinders. And you can see this whole entire area is simply made up of cinders like this. Okay, so these are small globules of liquid material hurled out the top of the cinder cone behind me and they solidify before they reach the ground so they'll reach the ground hit just like that. Now these are large enough pieces of material so they do not go very far away from their source and that's why we get this fairly large hill the cinder cone built in behind us. Now as you can imagine this is fairly dark this absorbs a lot of solar radiation and here we are out in the volcanic fields in the month of June at about 3.30 in the afternoon and it's hot. It's about 35 degrees Celsius around 95, 96 degrees Fahrenheit and it's a tough place for things to survive as you can see because there's not much vegetation here. Standing on a cinder cone near the edge of the San Francisco volcanic fields and in behind me you'll see a large series of cinder cones but directly behind me you'll see the large stratovolcano that makes up the namesake San Francisco Peaks. The San Francisco Peaks forms the highest peak in the state of Arizona with Humphreys Peak at 12,633 feet. You recall that Humphreys Peak or the San Francisco Peaks is a stratovolcano, a very unusual circumstance this far from any of the tectonic plate boundaries. As we pan off this direction over here we see a series of cinder cones but also what you'll see down below here is you'll see a series and a large number of lava flows. If we look off over here we can actually see where the end of these lava flows occur. You'll see an escarpment right here and then you'll see this reddish colored sedimentary rock to the left. So what's happened is as these cinder cones have extruded lava over the last 6,000 years down this direction, it's flowed across and overtopped this sedimentary rock. As we move further off to the left in the distance, you see the, the lava flow that is the furthest extent of any of the lava flows of the San Francisco peaks. You can see the escarpment there in the distance. As you look further off to the left, this is an area out here in Arizona that's known as the Painted Desert. You see this brightly colored sedimentary rock off in the distance. Those rocks continue off about 75 miles to the northwest and end up making part of some of the major groups in Grand Canyon National Park. Directly in behind me you see a, a line of cinder cones and there's about three or four of them here. There is a major fault here. It's called the Dony Fault and it's believed that a result of the fault was magma that rushed up to the surface producing this series of cinder cones. Okay, we're heading down from the summit of this uh, cinder cone and we're looking for volcanic bombs along the way down. Oh, and here's a very nice one right here. If you take a look at this one, a very, quite a large one, if you look along in here you can see the flow patterns. That's when this was molten in the air and you can see flow patterns right here. They're actually all over the place. There's a small one right here. You can see uh, they're not all huge, but I mean uh, something like that landing on top you would certainly ruin your day. But again, see the flow patterns in here, very typical of the bombs. There's a very classic shaped one right here. 
This is sort of this football shape elongated along the longest axis here. And what'll happen is when they're hurled up into the air, they sometimes will stretch out in the air before they're solid. So there's a very nice one. You can see a bit of the flow pattern in it. Very typical size and shape of a volcanic bomb. There's a rather large one right here. And you can see that, you know, from here over to here, you see great, a lot, really good flow pattern detail here. And when it landed, it probably broke in half. I suppose it's possible that it just broke in half recently. Could have been from freeze thaw weathering or something. Sort of hard to tell right here. Uh, but at any rate, another very large volcanic bomb. And if we look off to the right here, um, they don't get a lot bigger than this one over here. It's a beautiful one, actually. You can see some beautiful flow patterns in this bomb, and you can really get a feel for how this was soft and molten or semi-molten when it was in the air and when it landed. San Francisco Peaks is a stratovolcano that formed approximately one million years ago. Recall that a stratovolcano is made up of a combination of ash fall and lava flows, and they typically have very steep slopes, as this one does here. Now, this is the only stratovolcano located out on the Colorado Plateau. The majority of the world's stratovolcanoes occur at subduction zones, and typically one of the better subduction zones we have in North America would be running along the west coast of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, California. And it is somewhat surprising to see a stratovolcano out here on the Colorado Plateau. The highest peak here in the San Francisco Peaks is called Humphreys Peak, and it's 12,633 feet and is the highest peak in the state of Arizona. Now, it's believed that the San Francisco Peaks were formerly as high as 16,000 feet before the top was either blown off in a Mount St. Helens-like eruption or rain and snow melt eroded the inner basin. San Francisco Peaks got their name from Franciscan monks traveling through this area in the 1500s on their way to the West Coast. The San Francisco Peaks have much significance to the natives in the area. San Francisco Peaks is one of the Navajo Nation's sacred peaks and marks their western boundaries. Mount Eldon is a lava dome. Lava domes are extrusions of magma with high silica content resulting in highly viscous lavas. Viscous lava does not flow easily resulting in steep sided dome shaped structures as we see here. If you look at the bare rock along Mount Eldon, you can see long lobes which reveal the flow structure of the lava as it was slowly flowing down the mountain. Volcanism is a fascinating, sometimes dangerous branch of science. Many volcanologists have given their lives to the study of volcanoes. But volcanoes are not just pernicious natural vents that take lives. Volcanoes also provide soils minerals, which enhances their fertility. While it's prudent to understand and avoid volcanic eruptions, humans should also be thankful for the benefits volcanoes provide.